All right, guys, what's going on? I've got about 15 to 20 minutes to do this video because then I've got to get ready for a wedding. Oh, you know what weddings are like? 11 a.m. till 1 a.m. Going to be an absolutely long day. But I had to get this video out because Dana White has just made a pretty significant announcement about the McGregor versus Chandler card, UFC 303 International Fight Week. Let me pull it up right here. Dana White's Instagram, where is he? This one. What's we up? Don't want, we don't want power slap. Now... This absolutely changes the game because the McGregor and Michael Chandler fight card, there wasn't really any fights announced for it. The card was looking a little bit weak, but Dana White being the G he is, he's a marketing genius. He gets everyone talking about how the card is weak. Remember when we were talking about how UFC 300 was looking quite crap? And then Dana White comes in clutch last minute and just stacks the card into the craziest card ever. That's what he does. I'm onto his marketing, his marketing strategy now. He keeps the card dead. You got one decent fight on it. And then once everyone's talking about it, he then stacks the card. And then next thing, everyone in the MMA scene and the MMA media scene are all doing videos about how stacked this card is. I'm on Twitter, Dana White, and I'm not complaining either. I just now know to not get emotional if a card looks dead a couple months out because I know that you're going to stack it eventually. Anyway, wait, I've just seen a comment here. Someone said, UFC is dead AF. Bubble guts. What the hell are you on about, lads? Shut the up. Right, let's listen to this announcement. I'm going to break it down announcement by announcement, okay? Because he says a few important things in here. What time are we on now? Okay, we can do it. We can still make the wedding. Let's go. Hey guys, couple of announcements. UFC 303, McGregor versus Chandler. I'm sure you saw it yesterday. It was announced. Jamal Hill versus Carlos Olberg is the co-main event. All right, there we go. Let's talk about that just for one moment. Jamal Hill. He lost his last fight against Alex Pereira. He was set to face Khalil Roundtree. If you don't know Khalil Roundtree, I can't really pull much up here. I've got a copyright strike, so I've got to be careful using footage. But he's a light heavyweight fighter, absolutely jacked and stacked. He, and he's got a very Muay Thai heavy based style. He's very light on that front foot. I think he actually trains out of Bangkok or he's, he's done a lot of... A lot of Thai training over in Thailand, at least anyway. I believe that was a kind of a tough matchup for Jamal Hill because Khalil Roundtree is a destroyer. The way he's been killing off his opponents recently, violent, violent finisher. Very unique, diverse array of attacks that he's got at his disposal. I think Jamal Hill could have still got the fight done. Anyway, we're not here to talk about Khalil Roundtree. Dana White has just announced that Jamal Hill is going to be fighting Carlos Ulberg. Right, okay, so if you don't know him, I'll pull him up right now. Carlos Ulberg, right, he's on a one, two, three, four, five, six win streak. He lost his first outing in the UFC, his debut, but ever since then, he's on a six-fight win, six win streak. Now, we'll dive a little bit deeper in a minute in, into who Carlos Ulberg is because it's, it's pretty significant, okay? But that fight, I'm all for it. Jamal Hill getting back in there. Is it enough time between the Alex Pereira loss and this fight coming up? It might be. Hopefully, he's not still a little bit wobbly, scrambled eggs, brains. Let's go. Let's continue. We are also adding undefeated 14-0 welterweight Ian Gary. Okay. Ian Gary. We all know what Ian Gary's like. The cook. <laughs> the cook. And I'm not talking about C-O-K. -okay. The cook of the Ian Gary's family is actually his wife's ex. He's a vegan nutritionist for Ian Gaddy. <laughs> no, Ian Gaddy is a C-U-C-K. Nah, I'm not hating on Ian Gaddy. If you're watching this, Ian, I'm not hating. I'm just having a little bit of a laugh. So, Ian Gaddy, you think that he would maybe face Colby Covington? They were having a little bit of a back and forth a while back. I don't think we're going to see Colby Covington in there anytime soon, guys. Colby just loses a fight and then sits around for two years and waits for his next title shot. That's kind of what Colby Covington does. And this is coming from a Colby fan. But come on. You're about 37 years old, Colby. Get yourself back in there. String a couple wins together. Actually put up an argument for why you should get the next title shot. Don't just sit there and wait. But anyway, that's what Colby Covington's going to do. So I thought it was going to be a bit of a long shot when Ian Gaddy was calling out Colby Covington. Regardless, who's Ian Gary going to face? Sorry, guys, but this video is like 30 seconds. I've got to string it out into at least eight, nine minutes, okay? Otherwise, my watch time's going to be awful. Don't hate the player, hate the game. That's what everyone does. Still talking substance here. He is going to be taking on the number 13-ranked Michael Venom Page. Ooh, that's a good fight. 
Okay, well, actually, come to think about it, it might not be a good fight. I'll jump in, in a little bit deeper in a second, but we got Ian Gary versus Michael Venom Page. Michael Venom Page won his last outing against Kevin Holland. In, what what were US, was it UFC 298 or 299? MVP looked pretty good. He's been fighting in Bellator all those years, destroying opponents. Now he's going up against UFC caliber fighters. And let's be honest, Bellator has got nothing on the UFC. I remember for some time, people were talking about how Bellator fighters are just as good as UFC fighters. That's a load of BS. That is pure cope. Oh, sorry, guys. I've just had peanut butter on toast and I'm proper struggling to, to gulp here. So it was all good seeing Michael Venom Page go up against... You know, Bellator fighters and destroy them, but he didn't look as crazy against Kevin Holland. He looked good, don't get me wrong, but you know, I think against Kevin Holland, maybe against Ian Gaddy, he's going to be a little bit more humanized, if that's if that's a word. He's going to be made a little bit. He's going to be made to look a little bit more human. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't think he's going to look like this invincible destroyer as he has done in Bellator against less caliber, less of caliber opponents. You get me points, you catch me drift. Okay, so we got McGregor versus Chandler. We got Jamal Hill versus Carlos Ulbeg. And now we've got Ian Gary versus MVP. Pretty good, but Dana isn't done. He's got another announcement. Let's have a listen. This fight is already the largest gate in UFC history, and it is International Fight Week. So if you haven't got your tickets, you better get them now. Next week is UFC 302 in Newark. When that fight is over, I'm jumping on a plane and I'm flying straight to Dublin, Ireland. We're holding a Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler press conference live and free on June 3rd at the Three Arena. I haven't been to Ireland in a while. The last time I was there was for McGregor Mayweather presser and it was incredible and I expect this to be the same. So get your free tickets now at Ticketmaster.ie and I will see you all in Dublin. Okay, that is going to be absolutely sick. A McGregor press conference in Ireland, in Dublin, Ireland. Do you remember the Jose Aldo and McGregor press conference? How crazy that was. I wonder if we're going to see scenes of that, like a throwback to that Jose Aldo press conference energy, because that was insane when McGregor took Jose Aldo's belt and held it up. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> So this will be absolutely sick. Chandler, he's a great talker. Conor McGregor, an even better talker. And they're going to do a live press conference completely for free. When is that? I want to go to it. I want to go to everything, guys. I've got too much on, but I want to go to it. I, like, oh man, that'll just be so sick. Anyway, there's a few things that we need to talk about. Right, we're on the UFC page. First off, let's address the press conference whilst we are here and fresh off it. So UFC and UFC Europe Instagram posted this. UFC 303 press conference featuring Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler. Now, have you noticed there is no mention of any of the other fighters on there? So I wonder if this is just going to be them two as the press conference. No Ian Gary. And Ian Gary is Irish. Is he from Dublin? I think he is, isn't he? So no Ian Gary. MVP from England, just across the water. But you think the deeds have the, at the UFC 303 press conference that you get them two fighters on there? Jamal Hill, Carlos Ulberg. I personally, right, maybe people are going to have mixed feelings on this, but I personally think that's an okay decision to just have Michael Chandler and Conor McGregor on the press conference. And the reason being is because, let's face it, this is going to be the biggest fight of the year in terms of pay-per-view, gates, like just eyeballs on the event. This is going to be the biggest fight, of course. So what's the point in having like smaller draw fighters like Jamal Hill, Carlos Ulberg, even Ian Gaddy, MVP, as much as they are on the rise, they haven't got the same pulling power as McGregor and Chandler. No one really is going to care about them and what they've got to say at the press conference as much as Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler. Now, you could make the arguments that people do want to see Ian Gaddy because Ian Gaddy, he's fun. You know, he's... a he can be a little bit cringy. I don't like to use that word. If if you if you a regular subscriber of my channel, you know I hate using the word cringe, dead emoji, face palm emoji. I hate all that. But Ian Gary, you know, he's he's just got a little bit of that cringe swag. So I think he would come up with a few decent lines at the press conference. But anyway, I'm not too mad at this. Yeah, keep it McGregor, keep it Chandler. Let them two just go on back. And, let them two go on back and forth for a good forty minutes with each other. And yeah, that's all you need. Right now, moving over to the actual matchups themselves. So we have Jamal Hill versus Carlos Ulberg. 
Maybe if you're a little bit of a casual, you don't know who this Carlos Ulberg is. Now, I seen Carlos's last fight against Alonzo Menafield, but then I think I missed his fight before that. Anyway, he is a teammate of Israel Adesanya. Now, there was a lot of hype around this guy, and he lost his debut in the UFC. But as I say, six-fight win streak. What's he ranked? I think he's ranked like 11th or 13th. I've got the stats right here. Let's see. So he's six for four, 205 pounds. He's got a 77-inch reach. Does it say? Does it say? Yeah, he's and he's, his record is 11 and 1. Right, so Styles, this is going to be interesting. And it's kind of hard to call this fight. This isn't an analysis. This isn't a prediction. This is just me immediate thoughts. Jamal Hill has got weird, unorthodox striking. He's got decent power as well. I do believe if he didn't get knocked out against Alex Pereira, it would have been a fairly back-and-forth fight, and I think Jamal Hill would have caught Pereira a couple times. Carlos Ulberg's quite evasive. He's good at fighting on the back foot. He's good at circling out and circling away from his opponents, just like Israel Adesanya is. So he's kind of got that elusive style. However, he's also got really serious power, and his jab is pretty vicious. Very accurate jab. He's very relaxed. Let me just go full screen with it. He's very relaxed, very much like this. Bump, 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 pops the jab out. So he's not all tensed up. So it's a completely different matchup than someone like Khalil Roundtree. So Jamal Hill was set to fight Khalil Roundtree, who is more of a, a Muay Thai plodden fighter. He's got that rhythm. He's got that front leg lifting up. Carlos Ulberg's floaty with it. He moves round on the outside. Boom, pops that jab. Off time, off beat jabs. So I think it's going to be a very interesting contrast of styles, this fight. Early predictions. I think Jamal Hill should be able to get it done. But, and I don't want to sit on the fence, but I've got to because it's not really a predictions video and I haven't really analysed. I need to sit down and analyse the fights. But I'd say that, you know, Carlos Ulberg has definitely got the potential to win this fight, especially because he's a very skilled fighter. He fights Israel Adesanya. And, and I'm sure Israel Adesanya was helping Jamal Hill in his camp against Alex Pereira. Sure, I read that somewhere. I think he was. Yeah, so Alex, so Israel Adesanya is going to have somewhat of an insight into Jamal Hill's game plan and his fighting style. Israel Adesanya is Carlos Ulberg's teammate. So Israel might be able to feed Carlos some, you know, some secret nuggets, some secret information that might be able to help him exploit certain holes in Jamal Hill's game. Anyway, okay, so we got that fight, and then let's move on to the Ian Gary versus MVP fight. Now, this could either be an absolute technical masterclass of a fight or incredibly boring because Ian Gary, okay, he has a few finishes in the UFC, but he fights on the outside. He, can't, he does a lot of moving back. Now, he does attack well, but I don't think Ian Gary has got as much finishing power as we think he has. I think as he, go, as he gets into this top 10, and then maybe eventually the top five, I don't think we're going to see nearly as many finishes out of him. I think we're just going to see a lot of decisions, almost Leon Edwards style. So great fighter, great striker, but just a lot of decisions. Ian Gary is more of a fighter who will pick it off from the outside. Now, MVP has got more of the finishing potential just due to the fact that he's so unorthodox. MVP, he's got that point karate style. A lot of people hate on the point karate, point kickbox and stuff, but it is so, it's so rare to see and people don't know how to handle it. The funny fact, interesting fact, the competitions that I had when I was younger, it was kind of the point karate style. It was kickboxing, but it was in the point style where you're very bouncy back and forth, very side on stance, using a lot of side kick spinning back kicks, long jabs, and that's what MVP is really good at. Is MVP going to be able to have the same finishing power that he had in Bellator? I, once again, don't think so. I think MVP is going to struggle a little bit, especially once he gets into that top 10, top 5. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup because they both fight on the outside. MVP can close distance a little bit easier. So I think that's one thing that's going into his favour, and he's got that unorthodox style, but don't get it twisted. MVP has got solid fundamentals. You'll never catch MVP off balance or out of position. He always finds a way. He's like a cat. Always lands on his feet. Ian Gary, solid fundamentals. Fights on the back foot well. Decent combinations. Solid fundamentals. Throws good one-twos. One-two high kicks, low kicks. He can mix it up very nicely. I actually believe there's going to be a little bit of a boring fight. Once again, not a predictions video. We'll get into that a little bit closer to the time. 
But let me know what you guys think down below. And then obviously we've got the main events. Come on. Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler. I've done a few videos on this already and you guys know my opinions, so I'll just keep it super quick. What are we on? 16 minutes. Let's get this wrapped up for you. Right, I think I want McGregor to win. I want McGregor to win. Do I think he's going to win? I honestly cannot answer that because I've got too much emotion in the game because I, I kind of like grew up on McGregor, even though I, I didn't grow up, but you know, McGregor in his heyday, we were all bought into it and I've got a lot of emotion going into this fight. So it, I'm going to have to try and maybe use my last system that I used with Tyson Fury and Usyk, where I listed out all the attributes and then allocated who's got the advantage in what area and then make like a very logical numbers-based decision. But I want, and I think McGregor will get this done, can get this done, could get this done, uh, sitting on the fence a bit. But Chandler, he has been more active. However, that's a false narrative a little bit because people say Chandler's being more active. He hasn't been active in two years, guys. Hey, that's two years now since his last fight, or is it just under two years? So it's not like Chandler has been like fighting these last two years, absolutely getting fights under his belt. You know, okay, Chandler was a lot more active when Conor McGregor was also inactive, so he was getting those fights in. And Chandler's a dangerous matchup, but I do believe that Chandler's body type, almost that Chad Mendes body type, McGregor usually does well against. Okay, McGregor looks focused. Focus, McGregor, the mythical fighter. <laughs> is McGregor, the, the main question going into this fight is, is McGregor focused or not? That's still yet to be seen, but I'm going to be siding with McGregor. You guys let me know what you think down below. Anyway, this fight card is shaping up to look pretty decent. We got three really good fights there. Now, even if the rest of the cards was pretty lackluster, I'm happy with those three fights. I think the three, well, the McGregor Chandler fight, we know that's going to be fireworks. That I cannot see that going the full distance. It's a five rounder. That's not going to go the full distance. McGregor has got cardio issues. Chandler, we haven't seen him go five rounds in years, in absolute years. When was it? I think it was back in his. Um, what was the organize other organization he was with? Was it with Strike Force or Bellator? Anyway, he hasn't won five rounds in years. I think that'll be like a second or third round finish by either fighter. The Ian Gary. MVP fight, uh, I don't really know about that. The Carlos Ulberg versus Jamal Hill fight, I think that's going to be a finish as well. So, boom, bring it on. Let's go. Let me know what your guys' comments are down below. Sorry for the zero editing. A few of you guys say that you don't even care about the editing anyway, especially when you're watching it on 1.5 times speed. But I want to get used to doing a little bit more of these raw type videos because it's just so much easier. And I'm trying to juggle 50 things at once, doing my business, doing this, doing that, your family, friends, all sorts. I'm getting the app, com my app's coming out in July, that's taken up so much time, effort, money, so being able to just not have to edit is a massive, massive uh, time saver, so let me know if you guys don't mind this style of video, or if you prefer the editing, comment down below, and let me know your thoughts on UFC 300, I'm excited for it, this is absolutely amazing, might have a little look into that press conference, maybe I'll go, <laughs> alongside the other 50 things that I've committed to on this YouTube channel, anyway, yeah, so comment your thoughts down below, I'm going to go to a wedding, have a few drinkies, see ya tomorrow.